You are listening to pastthink.com audiobook. Please like and subscribe, thank you. Chapter 49 Wu Yong completes his plans, Song Jiang again attacks the Zhu family village. W. Yu Yong sent Dai Zong to Liangshan Marsh to bring four other leaders to the camp. That day Hu Qing, brother of the girl Hu San Niang, the ten feet of green, arrived in the camp and addressed Song Jiang, my sister was very stupid in provoking your anger, and she deserved to be captured by you. I hope, however, that you will forgive her for her youthful rashness. Song Jiang asked him to be seated, and then said, The people of the Zhu family village have no sense of decency, and have repeatedly tried to deceive us. Therefore we have had to fight them yet we are on good terms with your village. Your sister had one of our leaders arrested so we had to treat her in the same way. We might exchange the prisoners, and so settle accounts. But our prisoner has already been taken away to the Zhu family village, said Hu Qing. I have no means of getting them to hand over the prisoner to you. In that case, said Song Jiang, how can we release your sister? There is another way, said Wu Yong, addressing Hu Qing. Your village must decline further assistance to the Zhu family village, and when they send a messenger to call for help you can arrest that man. If you do this then you can exchange that prisoner with us for your sister. You can now return and need not worry about her. We will never help them again, said Hu Qing. He then departed. Major Sun displayed a flag bearing his late official position, and duly arrived at the gate of the Zhu family village with his retinue. His arrival was duly reported, and Luan Tingyu at once recognized his old schoolmate. He went to the gate, had it opened, and welcomed Major Sunday. They all entered the village. Luan Tingyu asked how Major Sun came there at such a time, and the latter explained, I have just been appointed to take command of the troops at Yunzhou, and guard the district against the brigands at Liangshan Marsh. As I was passing quite close to your village I thought that I would call and visit you. Luan Tingyu then explained that the brigands had been attacking his village for several days, and that he was trying to capture the leader Song Jiang. The arrival of Major Sun was very opportune, like rain for dry grass. Major Sun laughed and said that he had no special ability, but he would help them in capturing the brigands. He made arrangements for quarters for his men and the horses and carts, and then changed his dress and went to see old Zhu. After the introduction and the usual salutations Major Sun said that as the village was in his district he would specially look to the advice and assistance of old Zhu. He then inquired how their fighting against the brigands had resulted. We have not been very successful, said Dragon Zhu. Major Sun then arranged for the ladies Gu Deseo and you to be introduced to the women's apartments. He then introduced Sun Xian, Xie Zhen, and Xie Bao as his younger brothers who were traveling with him. He introduced Yu He as a clerk of his yamen, and Zhou Yuan, and Zhou Run as minor army officers. Upon the third day after this an outpost reported that Song Zhang's troops were moving for another attack upon the village. Tiger's Cub Zhu said he would go and arrest the brigand's chief. He took about a hundred mounted men, and lowering the drawbridge left the village. He soon met a body of about five hundred brigands. He halted his men, and went forward alone. Hua Rong also advanced by himself to engage in combat. They met, but after about fifty bouts neither had any advantage. Hua Rong tried a ruse, and retired as though defeated. Tiger's cub turned to pursue him when one of his men called out, do not pursue him as he may have some secret trap for you. Your opponent is a skilled bowman. Tiger's cub listened to this advice and stopped to pursue, but instead ordered a retreat into the village. Hua Rong also withdrew his men. Upon reaching headquarters, Tiger's cub told Major Sun about the fight and how both had retired. They then all feasted together until well into the night. The next day about noon Song Zhang's men were again advancing for an attack, and the three brothers Zhu all went with their men to repel the attack. There was a great noise of gongs and drums and a big display of flags. Zhu Chaofeng, the village chief, went on the gate tower and sat down there with Luan Tingyu and Major Sunday very soon they saw Lin Cheng ride out from the brigands and coming near the village gate he cursed loudly. 
Dragon Zhu was annoyed at this, and mounted his horse. The drawbridge being lowered, he went across supported by a loud crashing of gongs and drums. He engaged in combat with Lin Chong, but after about thirty bouts neither had any advantage, and they both retired. Tiger Zhu now mounted and dashed over the drawbridge. He was met by Mu Hong, and they had about thirty bouts without any definite result. Tiger's cub Zhu now took to the saddle, and was met by Yang Xiong, but again there was a draw. Major Sun now called for his spear, and armor, and mounted his horse. He rode out to the bandit's troop, and challenged the best man to come out and fight against him. Very soon Xiu Xiu came out on horseback, and they had about fifty bouts. Then Major Sun by a trick let Xiu Xiu thrust in with his spear, and by evading it, Major Sun suddenly seized hold of his opponent, dragged him off his horse, and carried him to the village gate. He was greeted by all the men as a great conqueror. Major Sun asked how many men had been captured so far, and was informed that this made the seventh. He said they must treat the prisoners well, because when they got Song Jiang they would send the whole lot in carts to the district city. Major Sun sent Zhou Yuan and Zhou Run to visit the prisoners, and secretly told them of the plans for the coming struggle. On the fifth day Song Jiang again had his men advancing for an attack. Major Sun now suggested that the defenders be not excited, but be prepared to take prisoners instead of trying to kill the enemy. This was agreed to and arranged. Zhu Chaofeng again took his seat at the observation post on the tower above the gate. He saw large bodies of men on all sides, and it looked as though this was to be the final mass attack. The three brothers and also Luan Tingyu were ready to take their men out of the four gates to meet the bandits. The war drums were beaten, and a rocket fired in the village, the four gates were opened, the drawbridge lowered, and the armed men rushed out of the gates. Major Sun had charge of his own men, and took up his position on the bridge in front of the main gate. His brother Sun Exian took the official flag, and stuck it on the tower over the gate. Upon a signal from Yuhi the other leaders of the bandits inside the village blew whistles, and attacked the villagers who were guarding the prison van. They soon broke open the van, released the seven brigands, and armed them. Gu Deseo seized two swords, and went into the rooms of old Zhu, killing any woman she met. Zhu Chaofeng saw all this on the tower over the gate, but before he could raise an alarm he was killed by Shushio. The brigands under Major Sun now attacked the villagers at the gate. Xie Jin and Xie Bao went to the stables, and set fire to the fodder storage. The brigands under Song Jiang seeing the great fire pressed onward their attack. Tiger Zhu seeing the fire, galloped back towards the village, but was stopped at the gate by Major Sunday. He realized the treachery, and beat a hasty retreat. But he was confronted by Lu Fang and Guo Xing who soon overcame him and killed him. The villagers, seeing their leaders killed, scattered in all directions. The bandits under Song Jiang now had a clear road, and advancing on the main entrance were admitted by Major Sun and his men. At the other gate, Dragon Zhu had also failed to defeat Lin Chong in personal combat, and seeing the fire at the rear gate had also galloped back to the village. At the gate he saw Xie Jin and Xie Bao throwing the dead bodies of villagers from the wall, and he retreated. He then met Li Kue with his two axes, and in a short encounter was soon overcome and killed. Tiger's cub Zhu got reports of the treachery in his rear, and realizing that it was useless to retreat, he led his men in the direction of the Hu family village. Upon arriving there he was arrested by Hu Qing who intended to send him bound as a prisoner to Song Jiang. Shortly afterwards, however, Li Kue appeared and he at once took the tiger's cub and killed him on the spot. The villagers seeing this all scattered. Li Kue now advanced to attack Hu Qing who mounted his horse and galloped off. Li Kue continued his way through the Hu family village killing the whole family of old Hu. Li Kue and his men looted the farmstead and then set fire to it. The leaders of the bandits assembled in the main hall. Song Jiang was highly elated at the victory, but expressed his regret at the death of Luan Tingyu. When he heard that the Hu family village had been looted and burnt, he asked why that had been done seeing that the chief Hu Qing had been friendly towards them only a few days ago. Li Kuei stepped forward. He was covered with blood, and had his two axes stuck in his belt. 
He said, I killed the dragon, and tiger's cub, but Hooching got away on horseback. I made a clean sweep of the whole family of old Hu. I now report my meritorious conduct. It has been reported already that you have killed Dragon Zhu, but nobody has confirmed your other statements, said Song Jiang. Li Kue then gave details of what he had done. But why did you do such a thing in defiance of my order that Hu Qing and his village should be spared? You forget, but I remember, said Li Kue. The ten feet of green, Hu San Nyong was sister of Hu Qing, and she wanted to goddamn kill you a few days ago. You must not expect to make her your wife. Ironox, you should not talk such nonsense, said Song Jiang. Why should I want her as a wife when I have other plans for her? How many prisoners did you take alive? None. If I saw one alive I killed him at once. You do not observe my orders. I ought to have you executed for that, but this time I will excuse you because you killed Dragon Zhu, and Tiger's Cub Zhu, and many others. In future, however, if you do not carry out my orders I shall certainly have you executed. Li Kue laughed and said, I may have no merit, but I certainly have had the pleasure of killing people. Song Jiang then discussed with Wu Yong as to whether they should kill everybody in the village and make a clean sweep of their enemies. But Shushio pointed out that there were some good and innocent people in the village and mentioned, as an instance, old Zhongli who had shown him the roads in the village. Song Jiang asked Shushio to go and find the man and bring him there. In a short time Shushio returned with old Zhongli who saluted Song Jiang and Wu Yong. Song Jiang presented him with some silver and said, Because of your benevolent assistance to one of our leaders I show mercy to all the people in this village. We have thought of exterminating everybody, but on account of your great virtue we will spare their lives. We have been victorious and have killed all those who were really opposed to us. We will even give each family in this village a pickle of rice in order to show our good intentions. We will entrust the distribution of the rice to you, as you are a good upright man. All the valuables in the village and also the cows, sheep, and horses were sent to Liangshan Marsh. After the rice had been distributed as promised there was still about 50,000 pickles left which were also sent to Liangshan Marsh. The new recruits with Major Sun were duly admitted to the band, and all then went to Liangshan Marsh. Now Liang had been wounded by an arrow, and he did not take part in all this. He remained in his village and had messengers who reported to him all that had taken place in the Zhu family village. When the bandits had all gone a messenger reported to him one day that the prefect had arrived in the village and was making an investigation. Liang dressed up in his best silks and went to meet the prefect. The prefect was seated in the main hall of his farmstead. With him were a recorder, a clerk, several servants, and many jailers. Liang saluted and stood to attention. The prefect asked him what he knew of the attack on the village. I was wounded by an arrow shot at me by Tiger's Cub Zhu. I was confined indoors and did not know the fighting. Nonsense, remarked the prefect. I received a petition from the Zhu family village stating that you had brought the brigands from Liangshan Marsh to attack that village. They looted the village and you received their presence, but how is it that you did not go back with them? I know the law in such matters, said Li Ying, how dare I receive bribery from the bandits? It is hard to believe what you say, said the prefect. I must arrest you, send you to the court where you can answer the charges made against you by the villagers. Li Ying was arrested and bound, Du Xing was also arrested, and then they all mounted their horses and set off. They had gone only about ten li when they were stopped in a forest by Song Jiang and four other leaders. With the brigands was Lin Cheng who shouted out, We are from Liangshan Marsh, and the prefect, and his escort upon hearing this galloped away leaving the prisoners behind. Song Jiang ordered a party to pursue the men, who soon returned and reported that they had all escaped. The two prisoners were released and given horses to ride on. Song Jiang suggested to Li Ying and Du Xing, the prisoners, that it would be better if they both took refuge at Liangshan Marsh. That will not do, said Li Ying, because you tried to kill the prefect, and I had nothing to do with it. Song Jiang laughed 
the court will not discriminate as to who among us killed the prefect. If we go and leave you the officials will arrest you as being implicated. If you do not care to join our band, then you can leave us after staying at Liangshan Marsh until things settle down. The two men saw no means of declining this offer, as they were completely in the hands of the bandits, so they fell in with the proposal, and accompanied them to the mountain. Upon arriving there they were duly introduced to all the leaders. Liang then asked that a man be sent to the village to find out how his people were faring as he was rather anxious about them. Wu Yong laughed at this and said, All your people are already here, and as the whole village has been burnt down what is the use for you to go back? Liang did not believe this until he saw many of his villagers about. Among the prisoners he even saw his wife who told him, When you had left with the prefect, and inspectors about three hundred soldiers came to the village and arrested us. They took all the cattle and set fire to the houses and buildings. Li Ying was very much upset. Chao Gai and Song Jiang however bowed to Li Ying and said, We brought you all here because we heard that you are a good man. We hope that you will excuse us for taking such liberties. Li Ying agreed to let matters remain as they were. Song Jiang then explained that the prefect, inspectors, and soldiers who had taken him and Du Xing as prisoners, and had taken all the villagers to Liangshan Marsh were his own followers who had acted the part of officials. When the men were pointed out to Liang he recognized them, and was astounded at the way in which he and his people had been duped. Song Jiang spoke to the ten feet of green, Hu San Niang, and suggested that she should marry Wang Ying. She agreed to this, and the marriage took place soon afterwards. A few days afterwards a messenger arrived from Zhu Gui, and said that there was a guest staying at the inn who wished to meet Song Jiang. Song Jiang was pleased to hear this, and was willing to receive the man. Black and white all people know. Bandits know their enemies.